Welcome to What Does That Do? Where we take a look at obfuscated code and break it down to figure out exactly what it is doing. Let's get started. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at some JavaScript, which injects its malware payload using CSS functions. If we take a look at the code, we can see that it starts by defining a function, and then it's a little bit hard to read, but in the end, we see that there's this enormous array of values here. It looks like strings, but they're not quoted in any way. It's just numbers, slash, and then the letter T. If we take a look at a beautified version of this code, we can get a better sense of what it's doing. We can see the function here, create CSS, takes two arguments, a selector and a declaration. And then the first thing it does is check the user agent of the browser, checks to see if it contains MSIE or Opera and Windows in the user agent string, before it goes on to create a new style element, and then if the IE check is false, it simply adds the selector name and the declaration to the HTML content of the style node, before adding that style node after the first head element within the document. If IE is true, and it's able to retrieve style sheets from the document itself, it then selects the last style node, and if that's an object, it adds the new rule using the add rule functionality. Now that the function has been defined, we call that function with pound VA as the selector and background URL data string from car code as the declaration. It's important to note that background colon URL, parentheses data colon, is a perfectly valid declaration for CSS content. However, following it with comma string from car code is completely invalid. Moving on, we define ucyq to be null, and we retrieve all of the style sheets into the r variable before looping over all of those. And for each style sheet, we retrieve the rules either using CSS rules or dot rules. And then we loop over all of those rules, searching for the selector text that matches pound VA. When we find the rule that has a selector of pound VA, the first thing we do is set the text to a new variable and then check to see if it matches S followed by any number of characters other than double quotes and close parentheses, which gets set to a group, and then we assign that group to UCYQ before we take the selector text and assign the substring starting at position 1 to ZIO. So now we have UCYQ set to string dot from car code and ZIO set to VA. Once we have that, the script creates a new date object set to 221 and 4 seconds on November 3rd, 2010. And then we assign the seconds to the variable t. Now that we know that t is equal to 4, we see that this array is just a whole series of math operations, dividing each of the numbers by 4. And now we have fme, which is defined as an empty string but never used g becomes a function that just returns the arguments that are passed to it, and then tevq sends e plus zio plus l to g, which results in eval. And finally, we have cet being set to an empty string, hj becoming string from car code, and then we loop over all of the values that are in the vo array above and evaluate those to get their true value before we convert them to characters and append them to CET before we evaluate the entire reconstructed string. Let's take a look at a debug version of the script so we can see what it's going to print out if it were run in a browser. We comment out most of the functionality of the script and simply keep the strings and the array of values. And rather than evaluating the string, we simply log it to the console. If we run the debug version, we see what looks like partial code being printed out, with incomplete if statements. However, if we rerun this, 
and put it through cat, printing out all the control characters, what we see is a different story. Here we can see the complete JavaScript code, checking for a body tag before calling the iframer function that it defines down below. Alternatively, if it doesn't find the body tag, it will create it and then append it to the document. Then it checks for the body tag, and if it's present, it again calls the iframer function. Otherwise, it simply writes out a small 10 by 10 pixel hidden iframe in the top left corner. And all the iframer function does is use create element and set attribute to set up the iframe element itself before appending it to the body tag. If we take a look at where this IP address is, we actually see that this is a Vodafone Portugal IP address. And Vodafone is just your typical ISP for residential customers. So there's not really that much here that we can use. And if we grab the URI that it's sending you to and check it with curl, we see that it just sits there and hangs. So in all likelihood, this site has already been shut down. And fortunately, ClamAV already detects this as a malicious JavaScript file. So there's not much that we really need to do. And if we look at what the signature is actually detecting, we see that it's keying off of a substring of the large array that is in the malware. So we know that this is a relatively static piece of malware. If you want to see an example of how this can be detected using some of the functions within the malware rather than the actual strings, you can check out my JavaScript signatures that I have published on my GitHub. That's all I have for you today. If you like this episode, hit the like button. If you want to see more like this, hit subscribe, and have a great day.